Looks like some very pretty pin fire here. So many beautiful rocks. That's a nice thing to find on my way out. Hi everybody, it's Kate from Katie Did. I am here with at the Spencer Opal Mines with Mr. Mr. Did, who has never been here before. We are looking to find some opals and I'm so excited. They're like I just washed off my first big chunk and it is gorgeous. Let me show you. So look at the color bands in this one. This is a big, big, chunky rock, and uh, I might see if I can get Jim to split it in half so it doesn't take up so much room in my bucket, but ooh, this is gonna be a good one. Yay! They have just dug up all of the, stirred it around all of the pile, and I guess they get new stuff every week, but uh, the fact that they just stirred it up is really good for us because it means we don't have to dig into the hard packed dirt. This is pretty. It's not opal, it's like a chalcedony layer on top of either white rhyolite or common opal, but it sure is pretty. Not pretty enough to keep, it's a very big piece. Still, cool to look at. It's this red stuff. That is rhyolite also. Is this anything? Oh, yes, Jim, look at the color on that. Can you see that? Oh, uh, yeah, I just saw a flash. Yeah, there's a big flash right there. Yay! Is that a good one? Yeah, it is. Very good. Anytime you can see color in them, it's like a big bonus. Nice. Oh. This, I think, right here is opal, although it's not as flat as I would expect it. But it's a small enough chunk. I'm going to go ahead and take it. Ooh! Check this out. Ooh. Well, that just jumps right out at you, doesn't it? It does. It's like hot pink. Ooh, got something. Let's take a look. It's over there. Oh, and it's got flash too. Jim's using my technique now and he's having good luck. Woo, so cool. So not only is this just an absolutely gorgeous pink agate, that opal, pink opal, it has a story behind it because I lost it and then it was found again. It, I put it in my pocket so I didn't lose it and then it disappeared and I'm like, oh no, I lost my pink opal. And uh, sure enough, I sat back down, I started going through the pile, and I found it again. And this time, I'm putting it in a pocket that has a button. I had a glimpse, I thought it might be something. I don't know, maybe. You, you tell me, is it a... Are you tricking me? No, that corner, is that something? Oh yeah, this is opal right here. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice one. I saw that. And oh, and look, it's got the lines. See the lines go this way? Yeah. So you can't always tell, like, it's not always flat to the top of it. Looks like it's got some color in there, too. Might be good. Okay. So the way this works here at this the Spencer Opal Mine is that you pay $75 for a bucket, and then you can carry out whatever fits in your bucket. And uh, one of the things I found, and it... The thing is, it's super big and it might just be only on the surface here and the surface here and then the rest of it is just going to be rhyolite. But this is going to basically be my bucket. This is my gamble opal. <laughs> and we're going to see if we can uh, open it up and see what else is inside of it. And there is some really nice opal here. I can see some fire over in the corner here. So I think that's going to be my, my big find. There's some more over here. So whoo, wouldn't it be cool if it went all the way through? So I was trying to get the rhyolite out from underneath this and I broke off two pieces of opal. But that's okay, they're in good size to, to work on now. The other thing I'm seeing is that this is probably, as I suspected, just a surface 
covering and doesn't go very deep into it, which is too bad. But it was a gamble that I was taking at the very end of the day. I needed to uh, needed to leave and I found this thing and I thought, well, we'll just take the big thing, see what we can do with it. So I think we're still, still gonna get plenty of useful opal from there. There's actually some color right here and uh, you just never know what you're gonna find. So we'll just keep going. Oh, well, so far I'm getting lots of pretty little pieces to work on. Looks like this doesn't go very deep in there, but that's okay because it's still very pretty. Moment of truth. I just cut off a great big piece. And as I suspected, it's solid obsidian on the inside. This is spherolitic obsidian, which is uh, regular black obsidian with like little tiny spherules or little dots of, of I guess, rhyolite inside of it. So what I'm going to do, you can see here the opal has formed kind of on the lighter rhyolite and then the, the obsidian is kind of on the outside. So what I'm going to try to do is cut this piece out and then use the trim saw to try to get a little bit closer to see where this actually, where this actually ends. Uh, it's, I know that there's some good workable stuff here, but how much is still kind of up in the air. Oh, that chunk goes a little bit deeper. It's got some color right here. <laughs> well, you know how I like to learn. I tell you what, the learning opals is kind of an expensive process. might actually give me some pink opal there. That'd be nice. It's a nice kind of chunk there. Well, that end was kind of a gamble and I knew sort of in my heart that it was probably just on the surface, but I wanted it to be deeper. So I took it home and it did give me a nice little bunch of stuff I can work with. I'm sure I'll get something good out of that. And we still have a little pocket over here that we'll work on. And who knows, maybe there's opal deep within here. There's enough of this stuff that I think I'll try cutting it with the slab saw and uh, see how it looks. It's nice and shiny, isn't it? A few of these big rocks with some opal in them, just because we were kind of running out of time. And I thought, well, I'll see if I can see what I can tease out of them. And this one actually, even though it looks largely like rhyolite, does have some opal there and there's some opal here. So I'm hoping that maybe inside of it, it has a little bit more. We're gonna cut it and then we're going to cut it some more, see what we can find. So I have this wedged in to the vise here and the pocket that I think might have some actual opal material in it is in here and so what I hope to do is to cut it I might move it just a little bit backwards but cut this big piece off because I don't see any evidence of opal here and then we'll see what we have and while we're waiting for that to cut this is a little pocket uh, I bought actually a couple pounds of rough opal from the mine and this was in the bag it's been cut there's a little pocket there it's probably not super deep but I am going to trim around the edges here and see if we can find some color in the middle. Okay, I have this trimmed and it might just be my imagination, but it feels like maybe there's a color layer just straight down in there. So I'm gonna grind the edges and see what I can see. Usually you could, should be able to see the color layer as a different, different color in the layers of opal if there is one. So let's see what we can find. Okay, it looks to me like this is just a tiny little puddle. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of take the face of it down see if maybe there's some color showing inside, but leave the whole thing as it is and then shape it once it's finished. Okay. 
it looks like there could be some color right down in the corner here. It might just be a big puddle of common opal or just plain old white opal, but I just never really know. It sure is pretty even the way it is. The reason I really enjoy working with these opals is because there's absolutely no rush in the process. If you rush it, you could ruin it and miss what's inside. Okay, as I mentioned, this is pretty slow going, but look, uh, there was some suggestion of a red layer here, and I'm just finally at a point here where I think there's actually a color layer down there, so I just need to be patient and keep going. Cool. Slow going. So the question is, are we going to get to the color layer before we wear off the puddle? Your breath. I'm at a point with this one where I'm just not sure that I'm going to be able to save it. Um, the color line might actually go down at an angle here. And if that's the case, we're gonna just have nothing left when I get done with it. So I'm gonna put this one aside just because I'm tired of working with it. It's been it's been a long, long time. Um, and I am going to instead take a look at this one. This is one of the ones that I just cut on the saw. And you can see, hopefully, it has a very pretty color bar that just goes right across here. And I have, I have good hopes for this one. This was part of a big chunk of rock and I just used a trim saw to free it up so that I can start working on it. See what we can find. Uh, starting to get a little bit of a flash here. Once it gets to this point where I'm seeing some of the some of the color coming through, so you can see a little bit right there too. I start using this resin wheel. And that just takes it off super, super slowly. This stuff is so thin that uh, it is as little as a millimeter thick. This color line, maybe even less than that. And so if you go too fast, you can go right through it without any kind of reward for your hard work. So now is the time for caution. So although you can see the fire along the edges here, see a real nice flash right there. The difficulty is that this rhyolite, the matrix, goes kind of deeply into this right here. And so if I want to keep the shape, I'm going to need to not go too much farther down. Now, lots of people actually just would cut, you know, okay, we're going to make one here, we're going to make one here. And that's probably what I should do, but I just love this this natural look and the bigger stones. And so I'm just gonna keep on working this one and see if maybe I can get something out of it that's worth keeping. I saw a nice green flash across here. I'm trying to get it to do it again, and oh, there it is. Oh, it's kind of green and blue. So we're getting there. I'm going to just try to shape this at this point. I'm a little bit leery about keeping working it because, as I mentioned, it can disappear in a heartbeat. So I think I'll just keep it like this, shape it, and polish it, call it good. All right. I've worked on this one for far too long. Um, I think what I'm going to do, eh, it looks like a little boot. I think what I'm going to do is cut this off, cut around the edges, and see exactly where this line is. Because the problem is, we can see the color line down here, but I don't know for sure what direction it's going. So we're just going to cut and trim and see what we can do, and it might ruin the piece, but then again, it might give us a clue. You can 
see there's a very nice color line right around here, but it may not go, ooh, look at that shine. This is why people do smaller pieces because they can get right down to that color line. Well, this one right, oh gosh, I see what's going on here. This needs to kind of taper off a little bit. Well, this was worth cutting into it, but you can kind of see the shine already. Fingers crossed. The last time I was working with these, I had some folks say that they wished that I showed what I was doing, which is reasonable, except that it is basically, oh, it's a cava hair, sorry. Uh, <laughs> It wants to stay. Go away, comma hair. All right, so uh, basically all I'm doing on these wheels is just shaving off a tiny little bit at a time, and it takes a tremendous amount of time and would be very, very boring to watch. So that's why I'm just kind of cluing you in in the middle. Okay, you can see we're not quite down to the color line yet, and there's quite a little rounded part on the top. You can see that in here as well, that the color is showing on both sides, but not really in the middle because that needs to get ground down here. Still, I think it's gonna look really pretty. Looks like some very pretty pin fire here. I like that. Thank you for joining me on my opal adventure. I'm learning lots, and as I learn, I'm going to share it with you. Thanks for coming along. This is Kate from Katie Did. Keep on doing. <laughs>